everybody, and welcome to Movie Couple Live. This is a show where we talk about the latest in pop culture and movies. I'm Wendy. I'm Dustin. And happy Wednesday. Yep, today yes. is happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Hope you guys or are else all we'd happy we'd be talking about day. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh, this is true. Yeah, it would be if duh. It Only would be two the finale. Days away from it. Can you believe it, you guys? We have a lot to talk about on the show today. Of course, the first seven minutes of Mortal Kombat has been released. We've got to talk about that. We're also going to be talking about the Shang-Chi Legend of the Ten Rings trailer. And Amelia Clark looking to be uh, probably very soon. I think she's being eyed uh, very close to signing the deal to join the cast of Secret Invasions series for Disney+. Plus. All this and so much more on today's show. You guys, welcome. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us today. I hope you guys are having a great day day before we start anything we just want to say happy birthday to movie bunch Buncha. Buncha. yay it's a belated birthday technically yeah, his days. birthday was yeah. on monday but we didn't do a live show on monday so we weren't able to hear you know doing this video do a do a, a, happy, a, proper birthday. Happy, birthday, a proper happy birthday a proper happy birthday yeah to so oh i thought that was like I'm i don't know why something else falling over i'm like oh my <laughs> god oh my gosh all right, so uh, before we get started, you guys, we had um, quite a morning this morning. If you guys follow my uh, Instagram, which is just my name, at Wendy Lee Zaney, uh, you guys will know that I got a very special delivery. And just imagine, just think, imagine you you get a you get a little little ding dong at your your little at your door. You look in your ring cam, and this is what you see. <laughs> this is what you see, and you're like, what the heck? So. Um, of course, this was uh, we we knew somebody was going to show up mm -hmm. to deliver but a little something. Know. We just didn't know who and how they were going to look. So this is all. Um, if you saw the uh, post already on my Instagram, then you already know. But they deliver this little box that says "Conjuring the the uh, the Devil Made Me Do It." And you guys know that this film is coming out, the third film, I believe, in the Conjuring verse, mm -hmm. the Conjuring universe, um, coming out on June 4th. And they, they delivered a card with a little poem slash riddle. It's not really a riddle. I was just a poem. More like a poem. And a, yeah. and a black rose on it, letting me know that they're unveiling something at 6 a.m. Uh, PT, 9 a.m. ET tomorrow morning. So. Stay tuned to see what that's going to be. But also, since we're talking about that, um, there are a few uh, photos that's been revealed for The Conjuring 3. We have, of course, the Warrens are back in this one. And the photos don't, unfortunately, tell you too, too, too much. However, what we do know about this film is that it is um, inspired they're taking the Warrens, um, not, well, it's going to be set in the 1980s. And this is during the real-life murder case involving... I hope I'm going to pronounce the name correctly. Arnie Johnson, I think it's the person. Um, how you from the looks of it, that looks like how it looks how it's how it's pronounced. Well, we'll see. who knows? But he is the first person in legal history to claim demonic possession as a motive for manslaughter. So I would no, say who needs to make up a story when you have stories like this that are 100 percent true? Yeah, just make this into a movie. So I'm I'm very curious to see how they approach this. Uh, movie, I feel like it's going to be a bit more different than some of the other Conjuring verse um, movies because it's not a, like a yes, it has demonic possession in it, but it's not so much like a haunting like yeah. the first one or the second one. So, um, but all in all, all the Conjuring films have been creepy. I found the second one. No, you know what? I take that back. They all kind of made me feel uneasy. So I am glad when she showed up uh, this morning with the black rose that mm -hmm. she showed up during the day because. At night. Oh, can you imagine if no. they were doing that at night? No, I that don't would think... just be super creepy. No, I can't. Uh, uh, uh. I would. Well, it would happen, and then I would sleep the rest. Like the the entire apartment would have its lights on the whole night. <laughs> I would Even, go we, out immediately. We would have by a little stage. lantern set up. We would have a little seance to make sure, like have like a little circle of protection kind of Honavi. thing going on. Honavi would be like, detect, Judas, detect, detect the ghost. Because <laughs> you know, it's always the dog detect on dead. that's like staring down the hallway and you're like, what are you looking at? Stop doing that. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. So um, check that out if you haven't yet already. It's on my social. And so I did like a IG story. There's like a clip out for on the main IG feed. And then there's also an IGTV if you want to get like the full video. So all of that is available. Uh, we have a couple of super chats to get to really quickly before you guys dive into news flash. This first one comes from, of course, Marvin Martin. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. He writes, if you could make your own martial art. 
Mm. Mm. Like if, a blend? I would like, you know what, honestly, one of the styles that I really think is really cool, but, you know, of course, insanely hard to do, are two different ones. One is capoeira. Oh, yeah, that's and, that looks. And um, wushu. Both are very acrobatic, very flippy, very dance-like. I would love to kind of take those two martial arts and kind of blend them and kind of get like something a little bit more like grounded and dirty. You, if I'm not mistaken, Wushu is very up and Flowy fluid, and... but Capoeira is a little bit more like down in the... Um, but they could totally blend well. Like that's a really interesting mix. Mm -hmm. You took one of my components as well. Uh, Wushu is definitely one that comes to think of because it's... It's beautiful to watch. Mm -hmm. I think it really, I love the way it flows and there's a, a certain finesse to it. Uh, and then I would probably put that with some sort of weaponry. Yeah. Um, you know, like if any possibility, like let's dis let's suspend all disbelief at this moment so we can make martial arts work. I would, oh, you know what? I would, I would, I would do a full on like, I don't think this was Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I think this ha was House uh, um, House of Flying Daggers. Mm. But when Z.E. Zhang's character, she did like the, the ribbon dance, but with the sleeves. Oh, yeah. Like mix that. To, oh, that would look just, as a dancer, I would love that so much to be a physical mar like a type of martial art. It would look so, so, blend anything with dance. I think that also using cool. like the Chinese broadsword, like the green dragon mm. from Crouching Tiger, Hidden mm -hmm. Dragon, I think would be really cool in that kind of an art form. Yeah. In that kind of um Which we kind arts. of have already seen, but, um, and that's kind of why I enjoy, you know, um, I don't watch it very often, but like MMA stuff, mm -hmm. I enjoy it because it's, I don't think it's easy to master so many forms. Like you really have to train really hard. So you know when to use what and when, like, you know, certain martial arts, it requires you to be closer to your opponent in order to hit. Other ones, Taekwondo, if, you have, if you're tall and you have like long legs, obviously you have a, a little bit you, of you have a bit of a reach and you can, you know, do really cool with, like the kicks and stuff like that. So um, let us know what you guys, how you guys would make your own martial arts. Put that in the comments. What would be some of chats. your inspirations exactly. to add to your martial arts? We also have another super chat. By the way, thank you so much, Marvin, thank for kicking so us much. off with that great question. We have Chris's choice today. Thank you so much to Chris for your super chat. Chris writes, we all love Star Tours. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Very true. If you could go to any planet, where would you go? I would choose Tatooine. See the Sarlacc, Ooh. Jabba's Palace. Should we call it Boba's Palace now? Oh, yeah. Uh, and true. the Sail Barge. Ooh, if you could go to any planet, where would you go? Well, we've hmm. been to Naboo already. Yeah. They take us to a lot of places. Well, I know, but like if you really could travel to any Star Wars planet, this is going to get which real dark. Which one would you want? It's going to sound really, really dark, but I kind of would love to see it. Um, I would love to see, uh, 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 oh God, Leia's home planet. Oh, Alderaan. Alderaan. You know what? That's weird. I was actually thinking the same thing because but out like, of all wouldn't of it the be planets... kind of crazy as like the thing, and this is why I'm saying it gets, it's about to get real dark because that's how my brain works. Mm -hmm. Really dark thoughts in here. Um, the, it could, it would be a more dramatic escape type of a thing. Like you're an escape pod and not a star tours. Or you could be, I guess, like tourists trying to leave. Yeah, true. You know, and it's like during that last, it takes off as the 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 beam comes down. Like you are one of the last ships that actually oh. successfully got off of Alderaan. Yeah, kind of a thing. That's but crazy. you know, also because Alderaan is one of those planets that we actually haven't gotten to see very much of because I don't think we've actually seen it. Went it bye bye. In, yeah. Um, I don't think we saw it in any of the movies. I don't think. I don't think, I think we, it's we never saw it in the prequels. In oh books. wait, we had like a glimpse of it. I think a glimpse of it in either um, Revenge of the Sith mm. when you know Bail Organa actually has Leia. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Alderaan's a really good one. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to go to like Kashyyyk oh, or is a good one. Endor. I'm kind of a big forest guy, so I like Endor I, I like the forest planets and being like in those those Ewok tree um, tree villages. Yeah. I think those would be really cool to kind of, um, if they had like a touristy destination version of it, mm -hmm. I think that would be really fun. That's one reason why I'm also super excited for when um, the Star Wars Hotel opens up. To yeah. be in that world on a starship and you're able to do all of these so different cool. kind of like role playing kind of things. They have different jobs that you could do. Mm -hmm. Just sounds so incredibly awesome that yeah. I'm like, I will just stay here for my entire vacation. I don't <laughs> actually need to go in. I'll go into Disneyland, but I just want to do everything that that hotel has to offer. Of course. 
Um, yeah. Uh, sorry, I was trying to look for a piece of news that was supposedly dropped into our Discord, but I can't find it. Oh, did um, someone drop something? I, I, I don't know. I, can't, I mean, yes, but I can't, I can't find it. So let us know what you guys would, uh, what planets you want to go. You guys are already put some, putting some stuff in here. Uh, let's see. Smokey, 1419, uh, uh, to go to Chewbacca's home world for, for, the, holiday ho special. for the holiday special. Just as you come in, you're greeted by like a choir, uh -huh. uh, a, a Wookiee choir. To that would see, be so funny. To go to see Chewie's family from oh, the holiday uh, special. I think that sound. would be so <laughs> but you'd also see I sound just like to see Chewie's family and yeah. stuff. They can but, they can wear their weird outfits that they mm -hmm. had on the <laughs> holiday special. That would be hilarious. That is really funny. Oh my gosh. Uh let's see what else. Um you get other? to traverse to Alderaan in a uh, Night of the Old Republic. Oh yeah, that's right. Says Josh here. Yeah. And yes, it was described to Socrates' point. It was described very well in the book uh, about Leia, which I'm currently rereading. Just I because, I would just love to see like more of it. Because honestly, I'm trying to even think through like Clone Wars and um, Rebels. I don't even think we get to see Alderaan very much in those series, kind of a thing. It's like, it's like they kind of they know the tragedy so they're kind of like steering away from that storyline a little mm -hmm. bit yeah so i'm trying to even think of i think we might have seen it like at least once or twice in clone wars or rebels yes so now i kind of want to go back and see um what their iteration of alderaan was yes we have a oh shoot i can't find it why does this happen to me every time i try to find it like super bumps chat. you back up to the yeah, uh, beginning and of the chat i can't chats. find it okay so two things Cam K dropped in a super chat about uh, Shang-Chi hey, that I really, really want to talk about. But we do have the Shang-Chi uh, news segmented for later in the show. But I do want to... Because we are to... going to talk a little... Oh, no, that's... Okay, no. Yeah, yeah, later in the show. But I do want to address this real quick just so um, Cam knows that we, we have received and, and have read it. But I and I definitely want to circle back to this. But I'll read this out loud for, for now. And then we'll come back to it later on uh, in the show. Cam says, looks like... Uh, looks a lot like Majapur, where Shang Chi caught that knife in the trailer. It's also oh. in Southeast Asia. Maybe the Mandarins connected to the power broker. That would be cool. Would not that would actually be a really cool. If timeline to matches like that, like that, honestly wouldn't wouldn't surprise me. And also, I think a couple of people said this in the reaction video that the song that first kicked up in the Shang Chi teaser trailer is very similar to the song that they used in Falcon and the Winter Soldier when they were in Madripoor. I was very like, hey, true. what's this song? And everybody commented, and now it's on my playlist, <laughs> which is great. So, yeah, I definitely think it's, if it's if there's a slight connection, I'm not saying he is Power Broker, but if there's, you know. Like a couple a, degrees of separation. Yeah, just like if they have worked with each other, I feel like they, they would know each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, crime Lords, if we're knowing Crime Lords. Or like, yeah, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the Power Broker does work for the Mandarin. Yeah. Kind oh, of a thing. Oh, the or the, shot. the power broker is a entity of his own, but he still kind of bows to the Mandarin. It's kind of like, you just hey, don't I'm a big step fish. On each other's toe. He's a bigger That's fish. What I, I don't mess think. with him. Yeah. He uh, keeps me around because I'm helpful kind of a thing. Uh, we also have another super chat. You guys, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. From Justin. Justin writes, did you guys ever get a chance to see Love and Monsters? Uh, 2020 was a rough year, but that film was one of the few entertainment bright spots. I've heard great things about gotta watch that. love and monsters. Have not had a chance. I don't know why we, how how did we somehow miss? I remember doing the trailer reaction to yeah, it. Yeah, it looks so, so, so good. it's one of those so things good. that kind of got lost in the, um, uh, lost in the rough, so to speak. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, you know what? That's right. We got to go back and check that out mm -hmm, because there's mm -hmm. so many little sleepers that came out that are just really good. Yeah. It, so I definitely want to revisit amongst other things that still we have, like the list just grows and grows and grows uh, of things like that we want to watch. And then sometimes I find things, silly things, you know, couch potato TV time, like, Marriage or Mortgage, The Circle. <laughs> oh, there's a new there's new episodes of The Circle today. I'm gonna have to watch some, uh, like things like that that I'll that I'll all of a sudden start binging, and I'm like, wait, I, but I wanted to watch all these things. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I did finish the Irregulars, so that's an accomplishment for me. It's like I finished something all the way through. Okay, so um, before we, <laughs> Jack says it was Agatha all along in that movie meteor called Agatha 616. Uh, so before we dive into the rest of the topic, we do have some newsflash, both Debbie 
and MK and Noah, I believe, all dropped this in our Discord. So let's talk about this massive deal that Sony and Disney set uh, for their movie deals. And it's a super long article. Variety has it if you guys want to go ahead and check, it, check that out. But Disney has set a massive movie licensing pact with Sony Pictures, reading from um, straight from the Variety article here. For the U.S., that promises to bring Spider-Man and other Marvel properties on Disney+, Plus, starting with to Sony's 2022 release slate. Uh, and this deal apparently will run through Sony's 2026 uh, theatrical slate, it's which it's a lot of films. And I feel that's like... a good chunk of time to have that's um, crazy. access to those movies. Yeah. And what's interesting here is that this deal... It only, for now anyways, covers the U.S. market. So I wonder if that means that Disney Plus subscribers that are in all the other countries don't get the benefit of this deal? Is they that what, it sound, that's what it's sounding like to me? It kind of sounds like, yeah, they were able to do, hey, you know what? Let's just work out this deal. Mm. And then if this works out for us in the end, then let's negotiate and see if we can do other markets that Disney Plus has access to. Yeah. But that's also the thing, because I think Sony would also have to work with those other countries mm -hmm. as well, because each country has it's different, different laws, different, different distribution regulations, license, things different, like, like that. Yeah. Different licenses. So, I mean, this is really cool that we're going to be able to get all of this stuff now on Disney Plus. I'm curious on what the time length is going to be, like, say, for when Spider Man um, Nowhere Home, No Way Home mm -hmm. comes out in theaters, and then we see it. How long does it take for it to actually get onto Disney Plus? Well, typically, it's the the 90 days yeah right but i would think I would, but well, it, it really it really depends the things started to shift a little bit deals and 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 like timeline has changed pretty drastically because of the pandemic as we yeah. saw what warner brothers and hbo are doing as as you know they're they're kind of like sister brands if you if you want to call it that yeah they do um, work hand in hand a lot yeah so it's it's kind of like i don't know how how this will impact the Spider-Man movie because it's so far down the line, like it's towards the end of the year. So I'm not, I'm not really sure, but like for me, I'm like, okay, yay. But for everybody else, you know, in different parts of the world, I'm like, oh no. Yeah. That kind of sucks. Yeah. I mean, that not everyone's going to have access to it for this deal, but this is a huge, this is huge. Uh, and that it's so many years too, like mm -hmm. multi-year licensing deal, which is great. So I'm sure there, there'll be more uh, details about it and i will actually drop this link in the chat so you guys can go ahead and uh and check out the article for yeah. yourself and also you know it's really interesting to be like oh, with disney plus i mean since sony doesn't have a distrib it doesn't have its own um platform mm -hmm. kind of like disney plus or hbo and it's weird to see which comes um, movie studios have been like okay let's try to start our own like paramount, paramount you know and they plus. have paramount plus but Sony's like, you know what? Let's not, we don't want to mess with that. Let's just find just a company so that already has a well-established one. And we already have a good relationship with Disney. So why don't we do that? And then Warner Brothers going like, well, we already have a good relationship with HBO. Mm -hmm. So which companies are going to be hooking up with which outlets? And I'm curious to see how this plays out with market-wise kind of a thing. To see how if Warner Brothers sooner or later will be like, you know, we don't need HBO anymore. We're just going to make our own streaming platform. No, but I think they're partners in the sense of the company. I think they're under the same umbrella. So I don't think they'd be oh. parting ways anytime soon. But, okay. But I thought they were separate. Correct, I don't think so. But please correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. I feel like they, they're... Because you know how, like, for example, like a lot of people didn't know years ago, like Disney actually owned ABC and, yeah. and things like that. And sometimes you don't know. That. I mean, now people, you know, know. But a while back... It just makes me sound really old. Who owns what? That's people, people the big question. Know. So I so I think that's that's you have to kind of look at it in that way. So um and then Jack uh had a question about so is Marvel where is his question? So does is, Sony so like is so is Spider-Man still under Sony? I believe so. I think Sony still retains the right to Spider-Man, which is why they're continue the two studios are continuing to move to work together uh on producing and making the film but it is under the sony studio like headline like it'll be like a it would be more it'll say sony and then marvel yeah um, and that's kind of an interesting question on how that's going to build too kind of like you know is it safer for sony to be like hey let's get snuggle up close to disney 
because then that's going to help us survive and thrive and we have a good relationship. And also it may, or it, honestly, if there's going to come a point to where Disney becomes, hey, you know what? We can just buy you guys out if you want. I if you guys are up for it. A, if there's ever a moment where Sony gets weak. If I was a, if I was Sony, I'd be like, nope, holding on to this as long as we can. You're not having Spider-Man. Yeah, He's ours. I don't I don't think. But I you know, I love seeing the, the two studios continue to work together. Uh, we have a super chat. Oh, my gosh, Justin. Thank mm. you so much. Thank you so much. Justin writes, have you guys heard of Invincible on Amazon? Yes, we have. The animated superhero show from Seth Rogen and Robert Kurtman starring a Stephen Yuen is excellent. Oh we agree. Highly recommend if you look into it. Uh, if you ha to uh, Highly recommend you look into it if you haven't. We are big fans. We every every Friday, Thursday, whatever, whenever they let it, they, they release it. We are glued to our TV for the duration because... It's just one. Uh, it's. I remember seeing the pilot, and I was like, "This is not what I thought it was gonna be." Like, where is like this? You know, there was a warning for graphic violence, and mm -hmm. this seems to be like a nice coming of age story for Mark getting used to. You know, one. You know, having a superhero Omni Man as his dad. Yeah, the most powerful being on the planet. And two, when is his power going to get here? And once he gets his power, how he deals with what he can learn, how far his power goes, getting used to the power, the struggle of having a you know, secret identity and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, this is like super interesting and enjoyable. But then that last 10 minutes as a mid-credit, you're like, no, wait, hold everything. <laughs> everything just changed. And mm -hmm. with, with the show, with each episode... It progresses a little bit and a little bit and a little bit, and you it's it's very intriguing, and I'm dying to see what this week's episode is going to be, considering where we left off last week when Omni Man had an interesting rooftop conversation with his tailor. Oh, uh, so yeah, very... and how it ended with his wife. Yeah, but yeah, don't want to have too many spoilers. We don't want to spoil, <laughs> but uh, thank you, uh, Justin, for saying sending in the super chat. We, we love, the, love show. the show. We think it's excellent, and we are big fans. If you guys have Amazon. Uh, Prime Video, we and you're okay with like graphic violence because I think it is rated mob for mature. Yep. Just uh, I love the fact that you warm. can't say M A. You have to say ma. It's, it's more fun for me. <laughs> oh no, I love it. I think it's rated, absolutely rated adorable. Ma, ma for mature. Ma for mature. Uh, we feel like mamas are saying no. Rate it. No, don't, don't, <laughs> don't watch rated it. M A for mature audience. <laughs> it's not for you. It's just like parenting. So rated ma for mature. Um, and then we have another super chat. What are you? Is that what you're pointing to? Well, no, it's up more. Oh, this way. Okay. It was actually above that one. Got it. I felt like when you were doing this under my chin, you were trying to pick my nose. I'm like, no, no, no. No. Fingers don't what go is that? there. The, uh, the collapse of, what is that? This, uh, like... Sorry, I had a moment. My apologies. All right. We have a super chat from Ronnie. Ronnie writes, oops, that's not what Ronnie writes. Ronnie writes, hey, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ronnie. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. Hey, guys, hope you're well. How are you feeling? Uh, how are we feeling that the Flash movie is finally filming and Michael Keaton is back as Batman? Ronnie, we're so glad you asked because that is literally the next topic we are getting to. So a while back in a um, live stream that feels ages ago, we did talk about that like it's a possibility. And then Keaton was saying, I don't know, because it was during the pandemic and whatever. And we had fan theories on, yeah, fan is theories. he going to be... Um... Bruce Wayne's dad in Flashpoint Paradox. So it's now been confirmed by his talent agency, ICM, that he will be returning as his version of Batman in the Flash film, which uh, ironically also began production in London uh, just recently. So the film will explore um, Keaton's Batman, uh, what he's been up to since we last saw him in like the late 80s, mm -hmm. early 90s, was it? 1980? It was, no, 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 it was 19, I think it was, 80, oh, man, my memory sucks. Movie uh, Bunch, we're looking 19, to you. Drop, drop no, no, the year. No, it was more year. like 1990. Um, 1990? 90. It was, I think it was in the 90s. I want to say it's like... I don't think it was 80s. I don't think... 80, it, I, no, but like late 80s. Like 80s. Maybe late 80s, early 90s. 88, 87, or 89. One of the but three years. I, it's just the fact that, oh my gosh, we're going to be getting the original Batman playing the original Batman. Yeah, this is going to be Which is just fantastic. like Nerdgasm 2000. Which so I'm just super excited to see how they evolve this because they said it's lightly that the Flashpoint Paradox is going to be lightly themed on the comic book. So the no, fact, no, the the movie is the, going to be themed. Thank you. The movie <laughs> is going after. to be lightly themed after the comic book. My apologies. Yes. So they're just pulling inspiration from it very much. So I mean, because before it had to deal with Bruce Wayne's dad being Batman, Batman. But now we know that we're getting the storyline of. 
actually the original Batman from the cinematic universe. So yeah, this is going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, Keaton as Batman again. So I'm super excited about that. Uh, I I believe we what we'll be seeing is uh, Barry Allen. We know that he's going to travel back in time as he does to prevent um, his his uh, mother's murder, uh, and that I believe then creates other timelines because that's how things work when you play with time, and that's going to create a whole another universe that is protected by Keaton's. Uh, Batman, but like this is like he's like three years older, I guess. So I think what? the timing is actually accurate yeah. So it's still to... the same. Yeah, it's still on the same timeline. That's line. crazy. So I, I'm, I'm just I can't excited wait. to see that. I I want to see that so bad. Yeah, and see what they do with Michael Keaton's character. You know, do they get him like all kind of this mean, gruff kind of Bruce Wayne that we've seen before? You know, when Batman gets older, how he kind of has that Dark Knight, um, Dark Knight Rises. Mm -hmm. Kind of, um, or it's just Dark Knight. They get all mixed, the titles get mixed up, but the original Frank Miller one. Frederick Mingo writes 1989. Yep. Show down point for me. <laughs> uh, so super excited. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Blade, Justin, everybody is putting in. JCL says 1989 and then 1992 for the second for one. For the second one for the Batman Returns. Man, I can't wait. I'm so. Like, is it bad that I'm more excited to see just Keaton's? <laughs> scenes than i am about the entire flash film no I'm it's one of those things that's super i hope he has a big part I, I actually hope that he has like a supporting character role that it's not just like maybe like a 10 minute cameo or something small to where batman kind of shows up and then helps out and then leaves yeah. i really want it to be a big chunk of this movie so that's oh man who it's, well, this is wild like who knew that we'd be seeing keaton Putting on oh, the yeah. mask, the cape, all of it all over again. It's been joked wow. so many times, not just from like um, pop culture where people are like, I'm Batman, all because <laughs> of Michael Keaton. I'm Batman. I say And, that. you know, even the fact that the whole movie Birdman was kind of talking oh. about the trauma of Michael Keaton living with the mantle of Batman yeah. kind of a thing. And now he's coming back. And I'm just like, Yes, Marvin this Martin. is a good time to be a comic book fan. It, it really is. Marvin Barton writes, uh, where is it? They need to do Batman versus Vulture. Oh, that would be interesting. Uh, how are they going to do it? Oh, yeah, because it's just, Marvel. And... You have like set days where Michael Keaton comes in and films all of Batman. And then Michael Keaton comes in and films all of Vulture. Well, scenes. actually, he should be used to it because he did that movie Multiplicity. Together. <laughs> remember and so he had played four versions okay, of okay. himself so i think that would actually be really fun to kind of do for like a um uh what is it called um uh death battles death to do battles. like vulture versus batman even though that would be like batman the, the, the one superhero crossover i would like love to cross the universes cross the, the mm -hmm. cross, whatever yeah. yeah the different the different d the different comic brands if you will that would be so cool. I feel like I missed. Yes, here it is. I think there's even one. Of... Well, we got the one from Ronnie. And then there's. Nope, just one. Nope, okay, there's two. Okay. I like. This one, next super chat comes from Perry Stark, who writes, by the way, thank you for your super chat. Hello, the movie couple. It has been confirmed that Amelia Clark has now joined Marvel Cinematic Universe and has just joined Marvel Studios Secret uh invasion cast so nice. glad that you put this also in you guys are on it today because <laughs> that is also one of our topics so when i was reading this yesterday it, she was it, it, she was just like close to signing the paperwork um and i guess now it's now um, it's officially now done it's confirmed so she's going to be joining samuel jackson olivia coleman ben mendelson um uh and uh, uh king lee kingsley benadir to uh to star in Secret Invasion, the series yes. for Disney Plus. Like, can you believe we're here? We've, we're getting Secret Invasions. So the series will follow a group of uh, shape shifting scrolls, aliens, yeah. um, uh, and uh, who have been infiltrating the Earth for a few for years. And there's right now we don't know who Amelia Clark is going to play. Dustin's got his own theory. I we don't know theories. who um, uh, uh, Olivia Coleman will be playing, but we know obviously who Samuel Jackson will be playing. 
And Ben or Mendelsohn will be playing. They're all scrolls. They're all scrolls. They're all shape shifting into each other. We don't actually really scrolls know. Scrolls pretending to be scrolls of scrolls. Yeah, right. That'd be crazy. Can you? And like, then we get the super scrolls. That's crazy. But we're super excited. Do you want to tell the chat uh, who you think Amelia will be playing? Well, actually, I have two theories because it's Amelia and who's the? I'm sorry, Olivia Coleman. Olivia Coleman. The Queen. Oh. I'm thinking, yeah, one of them is going to be playing the queen, the queen queens. scroll. So I'm queens, curious. Uh, I'm just curious because um, Secret Invasion is one of my favorites from the cinematic universe. I'm not the cinematic, but from the comic book universe and also from the cartoon. Um, what is it, Avengers Mightiest Heroes? Mm -hmm. I loved that series. I thought it was so much fun. And I love the way that they did the scrolls and the espionage behind it. And who can you trust? And it's just a great storyline. And whether or not they're going to do that whole, the whole storyline of the earth was prophesized to be the scrolls new home planet. They did touch on the base that scrolls are refugees in Captain Marvel. So I'm wondering if they're going to start solidifying this storyline for secret in, for secret invasion that the Earth is kind of the promised land for the scroll um, for the scroll species and race. Yeah. So and th that their religious head figure, the Queen, is going to be either Amelia Clark or um, the, the person. I'm sorry, the other person. Olivia Coleman. Olivia Coleman. Ah! Thank you. I'm you gotta, sorry. You got to watch The Favorite. She's, I mean, she's fantastic in a lot of things, but you got to watch The Favorite. Um, I am super excited for this cast. Okay, I, and I will say this: I love Amelia Clark in Game of Thrones. Yes. I, I think she's great, uh, and I think she really connects with that character. However, I didn't love her as Sarah Connor. And there was one other movie that I saw her in that I didn't love, but I did like her in the Christmas movie. Was it the last Christmas um, with Henry? Last Golding? Christmas. That like she, if that's the name of the film, but it's, she's super cute in that one. I really, really enjoyed her in that one. But her Sarah Connor didn't, didn't. I didn't, I didn't connect with her portrayal of that. I'm not saying she did a bad job because it's I'm just one person's opinion. Um, and maybe because I'm so stuck on a specific way people should portray Sarah Connor because she's kind of iconic. Oh, um, God, you know, yeah. especially is... when you grow up with these Terminator films. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's really me. I think the other person that's played um, Sarah Connor extremely well is Lena Headey or Lena Headey. I never yes. know how to say her last name, who was also Game of Thrones cast as Very Cersei true. Lannister. So, um, but, so I'm curious to see once it's revealed when they're ready to, you know, let us in on the secret who she will play and i'm curious to see uh how she does with the role oh the other film that she was in that i didn't i didn't i didn't have any negative thoughts on her portrayal of kira in solo i thought it was i thought it was fine you I, know that, that i just is didn't true. love that movie overall i thought it was it was a fine it was okay it was fun there's nothing bad that stood out about her performance Correct. but overall i, I love the did... final scene with her though oh I was, yeah i'll say that that, that was, was good... like oh wait what kira mm -hmm. so yeah so that's kind of my thought on on that. Um, Blade says Amelia Clark has not really done any other great roles Be besides Game of Thrones. Hopefully, she will knock it out of the park. Yeah, you're right. Um, she spent a lot of years in TV. No, you know, that's and, and eight seasons in Game of Thrones. That's a yeah. lot of time dedicated to one role and one show. And I think she went above and beyond. She speaks the language. You know, she's got to do a, a bunch of crazy things. She's got to like get naked for the for for the camera, which I think honestly, it's like the hardest thing to do. Oh yeah, that's got to be the weird. I mean, like really hard to one maintain your composure as an actor, be able to perform and you do your really lines, become that that character and not be you for the time that you're you're spent there. And yes, it's a close set, so it's not like you have but you, you still know two hundred like, people on set, but you're still in front of other people. Yeah, you know, and and you, I, I would feel extremely vulnerable and. So, um, looking forward, very excited for her. Um, uh, and when we want to, of course, send her our congratulations. We have, is and it's just the fact you know, chat? after seeing her for like eight, nine years as a certain character, she's so good. It's, at really, it's really hard she's to good. turn that off in your brain, and yes. that's why, what is it they say, TV stars have a really difficult time breaking out into film because. The audience, worldwide audiences, have spent so many hours with them as this character. That they become that character. Not just become that character, but it's hard for the audience to not see them. 
as that character. as that character. That's so true. You have two sides of the coin as well. I will say I agree with that because in the show, in GOT, she's got this like white blonde hair. So whenever I see her in her natural hair color, I'm like, wait. Mm-hmm. And then she's smiling. I'm like, wait. Because she's so serious in Game of Thrones. There's like a lot. There, I mean, the whole the whole show is serious. You survive politics, yeah. war, dragons, dragons. So, so you know, So, but we're we're excited for her. Looking forward to the series. We have a couple of super chats to get to. Thank you so much for you guys' um support and contribution. This one comes from Cam K. Thank you, Cam. Cam writes, just wanted to say y'all are just radiating connectedness all as a couple. And it's nice to see. And I think that's a part of your success and continuing success. Thank you. Oh my God, that's so that's sweet, Cam. Really... Thank that's you so much. Like... Thank you so much. I feel like our, do, our heart's uh, lopsided. Your heart, your side of the heart looks fine. Mine actually looks like a real heart, but it has kind of like that. Well, you just curl your finger more and you you put your thumb like, out. Like that? Oh, and they have to turn it like this. <laughs> see what I mean? Do you want to do the other hand? No, because I have to be like... Oh, wait, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Sorry, guys. I think it's the fact that we're just both huge dorks. So we just feed off of each other very yeah, much. We're just, we're just two really weird people at the end of the day. Like, when people are like, oh, we love hanging out with you. I'm like, why? But Cam K, thank you very hey, much Cam. for that super chat. That's super sweet. So sweet. Thank you so much. We also have them from, hey, Boogie Tron 2000. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Unrelated topic. But what would be the next lineup for Justice League if they continued the Snyderverse after the flash movie oh. now, with the caveat knowing about as we as we jump into this question knowing that i believe the studio has said that they're not going to continue on with the spider verse snyder cut snyder snyder, snyder verse. oh snyder i thought you said spider verse and i'm like snyder no my apologies snyder everything's verse. blending in together however for the i i want i want to jump into this question um for me in my perfect world it would be cyborg me too I was, I was going to oh, say on the count 100%. of three. Oh, dang. Because I knew it was going to be sorry. Cyborg. But yeah, definitely Cyborg. I want to see his story, too. I mean, his story is great. And if you if you watch the spectacle, that is the Snyder Cut that was on HBO Max. Did it leave or is it still on there? Mm, I think it's still up there. I think it's still up. But um, it's I would, I would say they definitely really fleshed out Cyborg's story. Yeah. They, they gave, uh, you know, Barry Allen a little bit, too. But I think cyborgs is one that was really interesting to me you know this like tragic accident and him you know loathing his dad for what his dad turned him into because his dad couldn't deal with the loss of both of his wife and his son and trying to do what he thought was right and yeah. then cyborg kind of resenting him for that until the end there were sacrifices and and seeing what cyborg can do with his power and what he does with his power is really interesting and i felt like his story that was portrayed in Justice League was kind of tip of the iceberg. So I would have yes. loved to see more of that. Still holding out hope what for Ray I Fisher. would really love to see, too, is after the Cyborg movie, do like a buddy cop movie with Cyborg and Flash. Mm. To where they team up on some kind of problem. or They're so good together in that film. Mm-hmm. I think it's super, I think the relationship is super cute. Yeah. And I would love to kind of see that buddy cop dynamic mm-hmm. in a flash cyborg movie. That would be that would be really cool. Mm-hmm. But you know, we can continue to hope. I mean, like, we'll see. I mean, I feel like at this point that that probably wouldn't happen, but you never know. Keeping our fingers crossed for miracles. <laughs> uh okay. Hey, look, another super chat from Boogie Tron. Thank you. Thank oh my you so gosh. Much, Boogie Tron. All right, Boogie Tron writes Would you rather see Amelia as the Squirrel Queen or my personal favorite, Abigail Brand, uh, which is the director Ooh. of Sword in the comics? Oh, that would actually work oh. out pretty well. If I'm not mistaken, is Abigail, I would rather is Abigail a mutant? See... If I'm not mistaken, you I... guys let me let us know I, that. I, in, I might be mixing it up with someone else, but I think that the leader, uh, I mean, the um, director of Sword mm-hmm. was a mutant, and she did have a certain power. I can't. Uh, it slips my mind at the moment, but yeah, I think that would be an awesome possibility. Yeah, um, that's why I was kind of like, she's either the probability of her being the Queen Scroll, I think, is relatively high. Mm-hmm. So um, it depends on how they go, but I could see her. You're right; she would do very well. Debbie's vote. That- is um, for Abigail Brand. She says, ooh, I like that. I want Abigail Brand so damn bad. I don't know which one I would pick. Okay, so uh, Dale writes that uh, Abigail is mutant. Okay. So you are you are correct. Gosh, That's what I, I thought. I don't know. Oops, sorry. 
Wasted Poe, I'm going to get to your super chat in two seconds. I didn't answer this question yet. Sorry. I'm going to come right back to it. Uh, ooh, I probably would pick Abigail Brand, the director of S.W.O.R.D. That actually might be a better fit for her. And then you can still have the Queen Scroll. But the like, so like, what if that's who she plays? Abigail Brand? Yeah. I think that'd be awesome. It's, instead of the scroll. I, I would want Olivia Coleman to be the scroll queen. Yes, that would probably. Because she is a queen to me. <laughs> and then Amelia as Abigail Brand. Honestly, I could see both of the actors playing both. To yeah. be completely honest with you, if I, I'm, I'm trying to visualize it and I can see it both, but I feel like they'll probably go Olivia Coleman for the queen. Uh, and then, and then Amelia, and this is just, we're, we're spitballing this. None of this is confirmed. This is us all fan theorying it out there. We're just geeking out. And if anyone in the chat actually remembers what, um, Abigail Brand's power was as a mutant, please drop it into the chat. Cause I'm trying to remember what it was. I think it was like teleportation. Pyrokinesis. Pyro. Oh, she was is able to control was? fire. Ken says that. So she's a, kind of like what a, um, what is that called? What a. Blade says it too. What um Pyro, fire? yeah, able That's to control fire. Cool. Ooh. So so Amelia would go from one like fire breathing dragon <laughs> to where to she's a, she's she's able to control breathe fire herself. It's done. It's done. That has to be it. Oh gosh, we should we should try to remember what we said today, and when it's finally revealed of of who's playing what, uh, or who's playing who Start in the series. Bets down. Yeah, we 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 can we can uh we can come back to this and be like, remember we said this. Back in April 20, 21st, 2021, and uh, we were so wrong, or we were so right. It could, mm -hmm. go, it could go one of both ways, so I feel like we're probably wrong, because most often our fan theories are incorrect. All right. Uh, there was a uh, Wasted Pose. Here it is. Super chat. Thank you so much to Boogie Tron for sending that in. Wasted Poe writes, echoing uh, Nicholas's suggestion, would you ever do full movie reaction? Though first time reactions might be hard because you've already seen a lot. Yes, first time reactions um, are hard. The reason why I personally um, haven't been too, too hmm, invested in doing a movie reaction is because it's a large chunk of video file Yeah, that is going to have to be put out there. And if I'm going to put it on YouTube, obviously it would have to be a lot of chopping and the editing time. I can just see it taking up multiple, like if I, if I sit there at my desk, it would take the entire day. If I, I could potentially hire somebody to do it, but we're trying to like save money and not do that. Um, so I'm, I'm a little, I'm already a little weary doing reactions to TV shows, which is why you guys only see us stick to certain ones. Um, and, um, and, you've had and to those actually, are chopped up. You've had to really work on your editing skills with being able to find the right way to make that work. Yeah. I mean, and the I think being able I to spent, do a whole movie is tough. Yeah. It, if anything, if we ever did do it, it would be like a watch along where the, the movie wouldn't be shown anywhere on the screen, not even for like a couple of seconds. It would just have maybe a little timestamp little little timer going so you guys know where we are in the film so you could do a watch along but i don't necessarily feel like i would i would at, at this moment want to do a full reaction i know tons of other reactors our friends late to the party as well as uh, the real rejects both do it and they're super successful in doing that i i just worry about the the time commitment for that and and also just like there's just that fear i don't know it just feels Weird to react project. to a full movie because you're not the first person to ask and you're you're certainly not going to be the last person to ask. Um, as of right now, I don't think we're going to venture into that quite yet. So we might stick to trailers and TV shows for now until we feel a little bit more comfortable with, with that type of content on, on our end. But I don't know. There's like a large demand for it that maybe we can think about it. Yeah. But also to pose point, to, to his point, first time reactions are going to be hard because usually and as also with theaters opening back up we're going to want to start going back to the theaters to watch films right not now we're true. watching it from home so it's not a big deal um like for example love and monsters we haven't seen yet so that could potentially be one but it's going to be a little weird to have like the camera right in front of you the whole time <laughs> for the two because i zone out when and i'm watching movies. a lot of footage that we're filming yeah it's a lot it's like you know like two hours minimal so 
anyways, let us know you guys' thoughts um, about that in the chats and in the comments as we move on to the next topic, which is, uh, believe it or not, this topic. So we uh, ended up going back to Disneyland just this past... Two days ago? Monday. Yes, it was Monday, today's Monday. It was Monday. Um, so we, we were able to score tickets for a touch of Disney after the debacle of the ticketing purchasing. There were, there were things involved that, that helped us acquire some tickets. We paid the prices. We went and it was, it felt normal and weird at the same time to, to be back in the parks. But I will say um, we took all the repercussion that we needed to take. Uh, you know, we double masked. Yep. We, Social both, distance as much as possible. And we've both gotten our vaccine. We both have our vaccines, uh, fully vaxxed right now, uh, as of today. So that's it's it's uh so we felt a little bit more comfortable, but you know, definitely still kept our distance, a lot of hand washing, a oh, lot yeah. of and a lot, a lot of, of hand, hand sanitizer. sanitizer. Like our hands were oh my too, gosh, super my dried out hands. From, they still haven't recovered. Yeah, from from the alcohol. And uh and we have tickets to go back to see Avengers Campus in June. So we're super excited about that. But that was a nice like breath of fresh well we weren't we were nasty, but <laughs> figuratively a breath of fresh air to um you know to be back in the park so we just want to let you guys know that there will be a vlog of movie couples eats coming up for for that um so look forward to that so do we want to take a quick break before we oh, no, go no, no. We into can, i think um because the next topic we want to talk about is Shang -Chi uh Shang -Chi. And Mortal let's dive into okay. Shang Chi. Uh, okay, and oh, this trailer was amazing. You guys, like, what did what did our eyeballs <laughs> see? And this was just a teaser. And Dustin uh, was talking about, man, just look at how many fight scenes we are getting in the movie. And there's already in just a single teaser, there's so many. And can we just appreciate this for oh, a second? Oh, I love. I can't. I split lost kick my in the mind. Face. It was no. It was more than a split kick. It was the backhand split kick. It was double fist punch and then split kick. Uh, and then, of course, oh, the pose. he didn't even say his name when Aquafina said, who are you? I am he just he just he didn't. He just struck a pose mm -hmm. and he looked super cool. But we really enjoyed the teaser so, so, so much. And it definitely whet our appetite. I uh, went ahead and asked, like did a little call to action in the reaction video to ask what if I were to dive into the comic books to learn a little bit more about Shang-Chi, what I would read. So I believe there was like a 2020 like reissue. Uh, that came out for Shang Chi, so that's the one I think I'm gonna get, and then I'll venture into some of the other ones. But there was a lot of really great information, so I'm gonna be going back and, and come through the comments there to um, decide which one I'm, it's going to be like my first pick, and then yeah. I'm gonna buy that, and then I will rabbit hole the rest of my way down the rest of the comics. Because I have to admit, Shang Chi is one of the Marvel characters, superheroes that I know probably the least amount. Same. I mean, I'm excited to learn about a whole new character that I'm not familiar with. Honestly, I'm sorry to say, I did not even know that Shang Chi was the son of the Mandarin. We asked that too during the trailer. We're like, I asked you that. I was like, and is, I'm like, no, no. And the then picture I, got, Tony Lung, I was like, I got called out. I was like, is this the Mandarin? And I'm like, nah, that can't be him. But I'm like, would they really show us that? And then now knowing that, yeah, it's his father. Oh, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Will the real Mandarin please stand up? And it's right here in front of us. I'm so happy. Uh, the cast looks beautiful. The oh, yeah. fight scenes look beautiful. The action scenes look epic. Like, I can't wait and i'm 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 just so happy that we're gonna get like for real this time the real mandarin because i was so excited i was like oh okay and then when they revealed that he was just an actor i was like well no, no. <laughs> i didn't want that that's not what i was no but this for. is this is you know what it was I, i'll say now retrospect worth the wait because this is this is what i want yes this is the mandarin i want this is the way it's gonna and then we have tony Lone playing Tony Leung, sorry, playing uh, the Mandarin. One Wu. Uh, I'm, I'm just so excited. And uh, we think that the full trailer, the official trailer, whenever that may come out, probably mm -hmm. in two months or so, is going to look really insane. And it just looks like a fun set, you know, and to just, be on. And not only that, but I mean, the fact that we know that they're changing the, what the 10 rings are mm -hmm. and how they, instead of being rings on your finger, there are rings on, on the wrist, on the wrists and the, and the forearms. Yeah. And I'm just like, 
I want to see more of this. I want to know what they're doing. I want to know um, how they're planning on attacking the attacking the storyline. And mm-hmm. I'm it's just they, this trailer did an amazing job on just getting you hyped. They showed the power of what these 10 rings can do, but yet they're not telling you exactly what they are. They're, and they're unless just, you've read the comics. Unless, then, then well, I think they know. might even be changing that up a little bit. Oh, you think so? I know like in the comics, it was actual rings. Yeah, yeah. The Mandarin but, had them all on. They're changing it to to for, from what it looks like in the teaser. Like honestly, we we don't know, but mm-hmm. what it looks like, it's going to be the rings on on, on the wrist, which and looks I'm great. Wondering if they're ever going to have any connection to to Stark Industries at all, or like say if Rhodey's going to be in it because there was always the Mandarin was an arch nemesis for Iron Man. It was the technology mm-hmm. versus magic. But Iron Man ain't around anymore. So, so I'm curious now? if they're going to just be like, no, the Mandarin is just kind of his own thing. Yeah, we wonder. Uh, that silly star. He's like, that silly Stark. He's like, he was all upset about someone who wasn't even really the Mandarin. If he went up against me, he, I would have crushed him. Oh, my gosh. Can you believe? And we have another super chat from uh, Boogie Tron who writes. Thank you so much, Boogie Tron. Thank you so much. Uh, with Shang-Chi coming into play in the MCU, do you think this is Marvel's way of saying they're going to go uh, back to big but grounded hero tales like Daredevil and the Defenders, also Iron mm-hmm. Fist cameo? Uh, it's I, I would love nothing more than to see some of these Netflix Marvel uh, shows come back. Like, I need another season of The Punisher and Luke oh, Cage, yeah. Jessica Jones, and Daredevil. I didn't love Iron Fist. I personally could do without an Iron Fist cameo. That's just me, though. I just didn't, I didn't love, I didn't love the story and I didn't love the character. I'm sorry. They could retroactively introduce a different um, Iron Fist, I guess. Yeah, if they but wanted then to. if they wanted to do that, doesn't that mean they have to change then Luke Cage eventually because of the Defenders? Not necessarily. I mean, honestly, I don't in want this that. day, in this day and age now, Cage. in this day and age now, you could pick and choose from whatever. And honestly, people are going to go. I think the audience will be perfectly fine with it. Mm-hmm. I think the audience will be like, okay, they they chose what they wanted to keep, and then they changed things that they didn't want to keep. Yeah. And it makes sense because it's their property. And I would I'm honestly, whatever brings these characters to the forefront a little bit more, mm-hmm. I'm excited for. Mm-hmm. Even if it's like, hey guys, we're making a few little tweaks here and there. Yeah. Or if they do a completely new cast for Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist. Apparently, I'm game for it. He also trained Spider Man to fight when Spider Man lost his spider sense. Way of the ways of the sp- way of the spider. Oh, Ooh, see, that's what I would want to see too. Like as mm-hmm. we as we continue to introduce new characters, new superheroes into the MCU, like like that story, and maybe seeing it play out uh, like via a TV show because that's what they're using right now to kind of fill in the blanks. That would um, be in between cool. movies. Like I think that would be totally. I would totally want to see that. I wonder if they could do kind of like a crossover to see if they did like a Disney Plus show Mm -hmm. that was Tom Holland and Mm Shang-Chi or um, that universes um, Shang-Chi and Spider-Man. Yeah. I feel like we are not pronouncing the name correctly. So uh, a couple of people, uh, Debbie saying Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi? Shang-Chi. Oh. Shang-Chi. And also Shang-Chi. So, so it's supposed to be said more like a song versus a sang. Oh, song chi. Okay, I have. I mean, honestly, I could very much be pronouncing it wrong. But uh, yeah, let us know. Let us know, chat. The if you want to spell it out phonetically, uh, let us know because I've heard it. I've heard it. Honestly, I've heard it several ways. Uh, Let's see here. Got it. Ooh, okay. Tony, thank you, oh, Tony. thank you so Tony, much, Tony. Tony, who sent me my uh, Sanrio Amiibo cards that I'm going to be streaming on Twitch thank you so much. tomorrow. I'm super excited because um, I just got, with the help of our neighbor, who happened to have an additional working computer monitor lying around so I don't have to do my entire, like, like gaming setup out in the living room so I can now have it at my desk. So I think there's going to be definitely some Animal Crossing going down tomorrow uh, on the stream. So it's just twitch.tv slash Zany if you want to check that out. Super excited for that. 
Tony writes, thank you, by the way, for your super chat. Tony thank says, you. just wanted to drop in and supply the snacks for tomorrow night. Oh, oh thank Winter you Soldier. so much, dude. What do you want to eat tomorrow night? Ooh, I'm going to have to swing by the store and pick up some special snacks. Then. Yeah, special we're talking snacks. To Winter Soldier. Because we're all out of Blade's <laughs> snacks. We've <laughs> we been ate all that the Bucky, stuff up so the Bucky Nuggets, even without watching the show. Brought to you by Blade DG GTR. Yeah, so, oh my God, I can't. Talking about food and snacks makes me so happy. I don't know why snacks, we even snacks. started a movie couples channel. We should have just gone with food. We call it the snack couple. The snack couple. No, no, it's the foodie couple. We the actually have couple. we actually have that channel. I just I just don't I don't do much. We it. haven't yet. It, it Tony, takes some time you. to build up a whole nother channel. We are so excited. Oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm like salivating. I'm thinking about the food for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why, but I kind of want fried chicken. But Tony, Should I be eating fried so chicken much for that. at midnight? Probably not. Am I going to do it? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Swing by and get some church's chicken. That would be so good. Uh, and another uh, super chat from Marvin. Thank you so much, Marvin. Marvin, thank you. Writes, speaking of arm rings, read E.E. E. Martin's uh, Saturn book. Oh, I'll take a picture of this and look it up later. Because if I don't take a picture of it, I will forget. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do we that. We get so okay. many good recommendations. Yeah, if I don't write them down, I am totally going to forget. All right, uh, we have another super chat from Cam. Hey, Cam. Thanks, Cam. Thank you. Cam writes in the comics, the rings belong to those big dragons, like Fing Fan. Oh, Fong. really? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Fing Fan Foom. Thank you. Um, hoping they made the rings so big because they were supposed to go on a dragon. Oh, that makes so that much knowledge. more sense. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. Yeah. Oh, because if we could also get um, Fing Fang, I think Fing Fang from or from it's Fing. If we're able to get some of those dragons in this movie, that would be amazing dragons I think, give me I all the dragons hope that they kind of keep that on the down low Let there be they dragons. just focus on the story of the father and son and it's not until the very end climatic battle that they show the dragon come out and it's just everyone's gonna be like oh my gosh that would just be cool to see freak out that would be a hundred that's the way to do super that super cool to see that's amazing oh okay Huh? What? And a quick news flash from Lamont Smalls. Thank you so much, Lamont. Lamont, you, Lamont. writes breaking news. Uh, news. How I met your mother. How I met your father is a spinoff with Hillary Duff announced on Hulu. A nice compromise after Lindsay McGuire was canceled. Oh wait, is this like spinoff for for How I Met Your Mo Mother? But yeah. It's, oh my how god, that show is so funny. <laughs> it's so. And it, you know what's great about How I Met Your Mother? It's it's one of those shows that. You don't necessarily feel like you have to um, watch from the beginning. Like, yeah, you, you can kind you can of dive pick into it up an from episode. Anywhere. This is great. Congratulations to um, Hillary Duff for for this. I, I was I'm equally like sad that we are not going to get a Lizzie McGuire because yeah, it was, it was a whole thing and like to me that was kind of poopy. So I'm super happy for her. This is this is great. She'll be back on camera again, and that will be. Uh, amazing. And then, you guys, final topic today before we go out, because I, I know, just noticed that it's 3 o'clock and we're over the time. But And also, before we dive into this topic right here, the uh, Mortal Kombat first seven minutes have been released. Um, spoiler warning for anybody who has not watched the first seven minutes. We understand that it's a concern where the movie literally comes out in two days, so do you even want to watch the seven minutes? So yeah. we totally understand that if you don't want to, which is why we decided to save this topic for the very end, so we can have a conversation and hang out with the rest of you before you decide you want to, you know, leave us because you don't want to hear spoilers. Like I wouldn't want to hear. We actually talked about whether or not we were going to. Do, yeah. But do since we were going to put it off until the very last, and this was going to be our last topic. So we're giving you guys a heads up that they yeah, have spoiler, 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 spoiler warning. And this will be our last topic. So thank you so much. If you are departing us um, up to the, or if you've watched us up to this point, so you're departing us now before we dive into spoilers. So let's talk about, Mortal Kombat. I forgot to grab photos, but this first seven minutes was released, and I was like, wow, they're doing this? Okay. It's kind of what they did with Wonder Woman 1984, where they true, showed us the, the Amazonian games. Yeah. Uh, so I really loved what I saw in the first seven minutes, and it's essentially what you and I guessed it would be, it, it where it's the origin story of, um, you know, kind of setting up that, that feud between Scorpion and Sub Zero, mm -hmm. um, to, so so to see Joe Taslin come in as Behan and be completely ruthless 
and to see just to see the whole thing going down um and i love obviously two different languages were spoken in this one and like i like japanese the fact, and chinese i love the fact too that in that conversation he mentioned that he's like i don't know what you're saying but I know it was you and I'm going to come get you. Mm -hmm. Like, that's great. Just like this like, years long, decades long, however, however long grudge, you know, revenge tale. Um, the martial arts, the, the fight scene looks obviously fantastic Top in this notch. one. And I, I know that the film is, there's a red band warning before it. It's rated R or Mafra Matura, as I like to call it. But I for like somehow forget because every time they do something like an entire arm gets chopped off uh -huh. or, or the an sword. entire sword into the stab into the head like into the, the skull hilt. but the thing is you don't even see like the the sword come out the bottom he gets it so it's like goes down the spine kind of a thing you're just like oh, oh my god that he's not alive anymore <laughs> no it's really great but he's I not think alive he's not alive he's not alive there's no band-aid that can fix that <laughs> <laughs> um he's a goner uh i would say though the most the scene that stood out the most to me was when he ran up and seeing his wife and kid iced over like and the, and the just completely blue covered in eyes with the things sticking out from like to behind her mm -hmm. the aftermath and just over overtaken by his emotion and just be like oh my god no i'm so sorry and then immediately kind of dropping all of his emotions there and going on full killing spree oh. rage, which was incredible to see. So let it let us know what you guys in the comment section in the chat, what you thought of the first seven minutes of Mortal Kombat, how much you're looking forward to um, the Mortal Kombat film that is about to hit theaters and HBO Max. And before we go, we're going to answer Marvin's um, super chat to kind of round out this live stream today. Marvin writes, if you could make your own Mortal Kombat finisher move, what would it be? Oh uh, well, you guys put that in the chat right now. We'll that would also be kind of curious go. because you'd also have to choose what is your weapon, what kind of fighting style does your character have. My character would always oh. have like two swords, I think. Okay. And I would love it to kind of have a finishing move where you take both swords and you both like thrust right into the avenue. One goes up and one goes down, and you oh nasty, and you just split them in half, and then you have the kind of. You know what I would love? Some sort of, if anyone's watched Bleach, and I think it's also in Raya and the Last Dragons, I think it's a Southeast uh, Asian uh, weapon. It's the sword that can extend and has the wires in it that extends super long. Oh, yeah. So my finishing move would be kind of using that, that sword in like a whipping motion so the teeth and the blade cuts into the person, wraps around their body, and as you pull, that's, Ooh, that's the fatality, chainsaw. and you just see like blood drip and then like the body falls. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this comment is rated mouth mature. Oh, yeah. But honestly, that's one of the things that I think I'm probably going to be most excited for in this movie. Are yes. those fatalities. Are the fact that they're going to be gruesome. They're going to be brutal. And we're going to be able to finally see them come to life. Because so this, the beginning of the se seven minutes has shown that they are not afraid. To, sh to show gruesome graphic violence. Yeah. So definitely doing the fatalities right from what we've seen so far in, in the, in the trailer. Well, you guys, with that said, we're going to go ahead and leave you guys here. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We've got um, another live stream coming up on Saturday. It's going to be a big one uh, where we're talking about the finale for Falcon oh, and yeah, the Winter Saturday. Soldier. We'll probably talk a little bit about Mortal Kombat 2 because by then I think we would have stayed up to watch it. Yeah. Because it's going to be, I don't know if we're going to see it in theaters or we're going to, I, I kind of, we'll so talk about it. So this Saturday it's going to be like a little bit of news and then Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And then no, new, no news. Just and no news. Just Falcon, it, we're Falcon going to be doing Winter spoiler Soldier. talk of yeah. Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Mortal Kombat. Yeah. So there you have it, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you to everybody who sent over your super chat. Uh, we appreciate it. So, so, so much. A little bit closer to me um, buying a, a better uh, editing software than just iMovie. So, you guys, thank you so much for your continued support. We hope to see you on Saturday for our live stream, 2 p.m. PT. If you want to watch me roll dice and play Dungeons & Dragons tonight, I will be on uh, twitch.tv slash therealgopshite playing Glita, the Dwarven Barbarian, hopefully rolling more natural 20s than natural ones because that's all I was doing in the last uh, campaign. And there's a link for that actually on your Twitter page, right? There's a link for it too in today's show notes because hey, I was an adult and I actually did it. I did it. 
So you guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we will see you on in another video and also on Saturday. Talk to you then. Bye, guys.